folks. Tom here. Thanks for tuning in to this lecture number 10. This lecture will, will wrap up the series and bring us to understanding of the true nature of reality. Now, here's what we can say with certainty so far. First off, true reality is that which existed prior to the so-called Big Bang, the cosmic blast of 13.7 billion years ago. The blast, we're told, produced the elementary atomic particles, which eventually coalesced and evolved to become the vast universe we observe today. The fabric of the pre-Big Bang state is energy. We learn from Einstein's famous equation, E equal mc squared. Energy E and matter M are complementary aspects of each other. The very presence of tangible objects in today's universe, M's, is telltale of pre-Bang primal, primal energy. For discussion purposes, we can say the pre-Bang, Big Bang state is the father, and the tangible objects it became are its sons and daughters, and that includes you and me. We, the sons and daughters, are conscious with cognitive capacity. So as offsprings, we conclude that the father is likewise conscious with cognitive capacity. So, we can say that true reality is that which preceded the Big Bang. Its fabric is energy. It is conscious and cognitive. And it has the capacity to individualize into various species of bulk of form and function in a lived way. And best of all, we are that. Now, I'm being careful with words here. The father is not a he. It is genderless. The father is an it. Reality, energy, conforms to the law of thermodynamics, which is the physics of energy and heat. According to the first law, energy cannot be created or destroyed. Thus, the father always was and always will be. And according to the first law, it has a capacity to change form, that is, from intangible to tangible, from form to formless, from disorganized to order. Under the second law, energy systems always age toward disorder, randomness. This is known as the law of entropy. For example, coffee in a cup is a formed system. Microwave it to add energy. The added energy jiggles the, mo the coffee molecules around, producing heat. The added energy, however, doesn't want to be formed in a cup. It seeks the freedom and disorder and randomness, the natural state. Thus, it escapes the cup and the contents cool as the energy that was added by the microwave disperses randomly throughout the surroundings. The same concept applies to the human body. The human body as a system is made of energy, and it too is subject to the second law. Therefore, its natural inclination is to become disordered and find the freedom of randomness. In resurrection, the energy that brought order to Jesus' body released into the tomb, bringing about disorder and randomness. Now, as we discuss, some of the release energy modified the shroud by breaking molecular bonds. Some lifted blood clots from the body. Some converted nitrogen to carbon-14 and so forth. While the notion of going from formed order to disorder seems ominous on the surface, it's actually a good thing. 
It is good for it reflects the inner desire to return to the Father and its infinitely disordered, random, featureless state. We learn from resurrection in rainbow body. The agency called self retards our innate tendency to return home. Perhaps you're familiar with the uh, with this uh, the uh, Global Consciousness Project, GPC. It's a 25-year-old research initiative that studies the influence of consciousness in nature. The project utilizes a network of 70 random number generators that are placed at various locations around the world. And they measure deviations from randomness during significant global occurrences. Global occurrences uh, such as a Super Bowl or Academy Awards, natural disasters, and so forth. Normally, the output from the generators is random, but when group consciousness focuses on an event, the, ran the RNG output becomes less random and more ordered. In other words, reality can't be ordered and random at the same time. What does it all mean? It means true reality responds to state of mind. An ordered mind produces an ordered response. A random mind, a random response. So, to look at an event such as a Super Bowl in expectation of an outcome introduces order into the universe. It matters not if the expectation is win or lose. On the other hand, to engage the event with indifference to the outcome reinforces randomness. Thus, on a human scale, an ordered mindset produces an ordered body. A random mind, a disordered, random organization. Now, logically, we know this to be true. The body is the mind. It is the mind only organized into bulk and form. And so, an ordered mind-body complex is counter to nature, for it impedes the return to the Father. The bottom line is this. If you want to be one with the Father, as Jesus would, you must emulate the Father, and that requires uninhibited, random behavior. That is, cease participating in the world, material world, with expectations. Let go. Let it be. This notion brings new light to Jesus' teachings. In Matthew 6.25, he tells us, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about what your body you will wear. That is, don't fret, don't worry, be spontaneous, devil may care, as he was. It worked for him. The shroud proves it as it shows his body went from order to disorder, leaving evidence behind. Why not be like him? Let be what be. So, with this understanding about the role of thermodynamics dynamics, and consciousness in human experience, we can now complete the definition of the true nature of reality. It preceded the Big Bang. It is an unbounded, uncreated, immortal, conscious, cognitive, non-dual, featureless field of primal energy. It has the capacity to transform from its natural, featureless state to ordered form, and it can, when in ordered form, reverse the process reverses the process provided it learns to behave with non-dual, random abandon, 
where everything around it just is. This understanding of reality and its true nature is a proper perspective for evaluating the Shroud of Turin and he explained the image thereon. Resurrection was brought about by his reckless, uninhibited, cavalier lifestyle. Therefore, the Shroud is not a religious relic. It doesn't concern God. It stands in endorsement of a lifestyle of disorder and randomness, otherwise known as Jesus' nature. Shroud is a world treasure that belongs to every living human being. Please do, do what you can to make it known. Thank you for attending Shroud University. If you receive just a small fraction of the benefit that I did by putting it together, it will have been a success. Let's keep in touch via my website. And don't forget my book, The Shroud of Turin, The Ticking Time Bomb. It's on the way, with a little luck, uh, possibly on the market by Christmas. So let's go forth with reckless abandon. Think randomly. Reject order. Release the maverick in you. Fear nothing. Don't look back. <laughs>